to use this in JavaScript, I'm pretty sure it would just chop off the D. Snap all of this. So it would just chop it off. Now there's a, there are regular expressions to get the entire word. Uh, that's something I'm not going to go over. But basically you use a, a zero length match called a word boundary. It can actually tell you where does a word begin, where does a word end, using any white space around the word. And that's not something I'm going to go over. Yes, yes, and you could add a uh, asterisk, which would say uh, zero or many. So in case you know, there was nothing after, then you know, um, there, or there there wouldn't need to be anything after. If I remember right, if you had a second snapple at the end of a string, mm -hmm. it would then return snapple twice. Yes. In the result set, correct? That's yes. Not. Yeah, and you know, it also, yeah, it also depends on your flavor. Uh, you know, if you were to put this directly into like cold fusion or something, you wouldn't even get the words. I think you might get positions of of the words, so it's different. So you have to, you know, if you're interested, then you have to kind of drill down and know what your respective language supports. I tried to be language agnostic here. Any other questions? Again, feel free to stop me as I continue. So now I'll go over some simple examples. Uh, these should clarify things if, you know, um, the, just the previous slides haven't. So we have two regular expressions here. You know, there's uh, groups, quantifiers, um, and these slashes are just what I use to delimit regular expressions. Just the start and end of a regular expression, because in certain languages like JavaScript, Ruby, maybe Python, I don't remember, you can actually just put a regular expression in the code like this, and it'll kind of like wrap it in an object. Okay, so what does the uh, first regular expression match? It matches to be or not to be. These are both valid matches. That's because we can either have or not have a not. That's a little confusing. Uh, and that's what the question mark says, zero or one. Okay. What doesn't match? Oh, this capital not to be doesn't match because regular expressions are case sensitive. Uh, depending on your flavor, again, you can turn that off. Cold Fusion has uh, re find no case. So just be aware of that. Also, it doesn't match not to be with two spaces or however many that is. Because you have to, have to explicitly state how many spaces you'll accept. To solve that very simply, we could add a plus after that space in the 2B. Or the 2 space plus. <coughs> uh, so this regular expression matches lion, tiger, bear and lions, tigers, and bears, kind of. So here we have lion, tiger, bear, and lion, lion, tiger, tiger, bear, bear. That's because we have a plus after each group. So we have to have lion one or many times. We have to have tiger one or many times. We have to have bear one or many times. What doesn't it match? It doesn't match a lion, tiger, bear, bear shirt with spaces, because I didn't put a space in here. And it doesn't match lion, bear, because we have, have one or many tigers. Grab the plus. Uh, there are certain characters, I kind of glossed over this in the literals section, there are certain characters you have to escape. Most characters you don't have to escape. But, for example, the plus, uh, it's kind of implied that you have to escape it, because otherwise how does it know? So. 
Uh, these are examples of alternation. So within a group, we can say we want one thing or another thing. So what do these regular expressions match? Uh, by the way, the alternation operator is the pipe. So I don't have uh, further explanation. But basically, uh, the first string matches either, uh, or the first regular expression matches the string the best of times, or it will match the worst of times. And the second regular expression will match either liberty or death. So you can see that one possible use of regular expressions is when you have, like a lot of people will match one string, then another, or another, and another, um, and have the same program path uh, regardless of which string they match. So a regular expression offers a quick, concise way to state, except all of these. Uh, and this is another stopping point, so any questions? Okay. Now I'm going to talk about some uh, sample uses, and this will actually like have real code if you're that type of person that likes to see code, I know I am. So uh, I separated them into four kind of loose categories, search, normalization, extraction, and validation. So one thing we can use regular expressions for are finding text in files, um, which is especially useful when the, the string that we're looking for is variable. I think um, Russ went over some uh, Unix utilities in a previous talk, so um, I'm just going to show a quick grep. Um, what I'm going to do is look for files containing ampersand to do or exclamation to do. And that could be because uh, you know, maybe different programmers worked on something and but they both used to do, or you know you could use it for something very similar. But this is a pretty much a toy example. Uh. So hopefully you uh, you guys are familiar with this. Um, was it the character class uh, stuff? Yeah, you can't see it. So what I want to say is either accept an exclamation point or an ampersand before the to-do. So that's it. It uh, just prints the lines containing to-do. And true, you could do the same search by searching for both strings. But obviously, the more strings you start to have, the more variations, the more of a headache that will be. OK, and another um, possible use is finding all the cold fusion tags in the directory. Why would you want to do that? Uh, you, you probably won't want to do that exact thing, but hopefully uh, I found any notes. But hopefully uh, it can lead to other possible uses in your mind. All right, I'm going to wing it. Um, it shouldn't be that bad because I should kind of know this stuff. Um, but I'm not like an expert.